Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am DJ, also known as Toy Snap. And look what I got for you today. I got the single carded red hood. Don't ask me how I managed to get them so early. I'm absolutely freaking out. I'm so happy that I was able to get them today to review. Uh, this isn't my usual posting schedule, but since this guy came in, I was just too flabbergasted not to do the review and get them up. So yeah, currently you're only really able to get them as part of the two pack with the new 52 Nightwing. And I know for myself, I already own like six Nightwing figures, so I was really not up for getting the two pack just to get the Red Hood. Thankfully, then on a single carded release, and he came into my comic book shop today. Shout out to Big Bang Comics and John for giving me the shout that he arrived in. So, obviously, in the box, he looks amazing, but let's see what does he look like outside the box. Before I tear the box open, here is the box art that they have chosen. So, they've gone with the new 52 design, Red Hood. That has the slight mouth indentation um, as part of the lines. I really enjoyed this design. I loved the leather jacket and I liked the red bat symbol on him. And I mean, who does not love the red hood? So without further ado, let's get this bag boy out of his packaging and see how he looks. Okie dokie. And here is red hood, Jason Todd out of the box. And I gotta say, I'm so impressed. Uh, just with first impressions, I haven't even really posing that much I've had a quick glance over the articulation and the details so let's get into it oh, before I forget here's the cards that no one really cares about that's the front that's the back it's not even focusing anyway there it is anyway the figure the figure that's all, it's all important obviously it's the new 52 design you can see that there it has the kind of mouthpiece it's not as exaggerated as it was in some comics I enjoyed the new 52 design, I enjoyed the new 52 storyline, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Starfly and Red Hood, and Arsenal, it was a great storyline, they've been pretty accurate to the whole comics, I love the leather jacket on them, not a fan of the sleeves rolled up, but sure look, it is it is what it is, it's gonna, they've done a good job of simulating the leather jacket, and as you can see, the helmet it's really nicely detailed at the eyes. Red bat symbol is huge. It's a separate mold piece that they've put on the chest, which tends to be the thing across McFarlane. They don't paint any emblems on. There's no messing around with them. Uh, the detail in the abs and the, the whole bodysuit in general is really cool. You can't even really see the articulation in mid mid waistline, which is pretty cool. Going down, then he's got his holsters hanging off. The Desert Eagles, I've popped them in already. We'll go over them now in a second. He's got leather biker jackets on. He's got his shin guards. And he's got big boots. And even the boots have detail. You can see it there. You can see the straps and the leather detail, which is really cool. And he's wearing biker gloves as well. You can see the detail on there on them. So overall, this is a beautiful... Beautiful Red Hood figure. I am impressed. So quick detail before I go into the articulation of the figure. Let me just try and get one of these guns. They're quite hard to jam in. I can imagine it's going to be hard to get out. Oh yeah. It's going to take a while for the holster to be uh, worn down. I hope it doesn't destroy the paint on the gun. Anyway, I'm just going to put him to one side. And if we could just focus on this. Come on, focus. Let me see. You can kind of see the Desert Eagle actually has the Red Hood symbol on the side of it. Which is a really nice detail. They didn't have to add that in. This is just their generic Desert Eagle that they give with most figures. I mean, I think this is the Desert Eagle that came with the Thomas Wayne. And... But yeah, they went ahead and they put the Red Hood logo on it. Which is a really nice detail. So I might even paint them red up. Paint them as red to see them even more. So here... You'll see what I mean about the holsters. Might not be for everyone, but mine were uh, quite tight to get in at first. So anyway, the articulation on this really beautiful figure. In the way of the head, it's literally just on a peg. There's no neck articulation. So it's just a ball joint for the head. So it allows him rotation around. He can look up somewhat. He can look down quite a bit. But that's, that's pretty much it for the way of neck articulation. This doesn't really get in the way, it's soft leather, so. Um, then the mid-waist has articulation. 
has pretty good articulation, standard across most Mercury Ireland figures now. And waist itself, it's quite stiff, but it goes the whole way around, has tornado waist, and it can go side to side, and it can go back to front. So Red Hood can crunch down, and he can crunch back. He can crunch back a lot more than he can crunch down. The shoulders, he does have that McFarlane other little ball joint, but you can't see it because it's hidden behind the jacket. And it kind of does still aid it. The jacket doesn't hinder the arm rotation too much. So you can go right the way around. There is bicep swivel here as well. In the fold of the jacket, he's got his double jointed elbows. They click up nice and easy. And he's got this. Ah! So McFarlane has finally done something different in the way of wrist joints. Now I don't know, because I can't see. What they've hidden, if it is a ball joint, they've hidden it. And let's see, okay, no. So the wrists no longer have... Yeah, it got a small bit of rotation. But yeah, it is mostly just right the way around. You can't move the wrist up, and you can't move the wrist down. So that's something different. I don't know if it's good or bad yet. I don't know. Let's see. So that's the rotation of the arms. The legs, of course, go out. The holsters actually come up. They're quite soft, so they move out of the way pretty handily. Again, there's little to none tie rotation. Small amount. Double jointed knees that click up and crunch up quite well. And then you've got the ball joint for the ankle. And it swivels right the way around. And it wouldn't be McFarlane without the toe articulation. Okay, then for comparison sakes, here is the red hood next to another two red hoods that I own. Um, on the left, you've got the Mattel red hood from the Rebirth design. It was a cool figure from Mattel. The designs were pretty cool. The best part about this figure was that it came with an unmasked uh, Domino Jason Todd head sculpt, which was just mwah. It can be swapped with this figure pretty nicely. Um, this guy, obviously, because it was Mattel, his guns can't be removed from the holsters, which I absolutely hated, but sure look. It was a cool figure nonetheless for what what the line was. Then on the far right, you have the DC Essentials uh, Red Hood, also from the Rebirth design. Um, on this version, they kind of went for the full grey, as you can see. It was a really nice design, it worked out well. The leather jacket, as you can see, is down. The sleeves are fully down, which I kind of wished was on this figure by Sherlock. The difference in the head sculpts, obviously as you can see this is the new 52 design, this is the Rebirth design. Not a whole lot, it's just a lot, just the, the, the lines are a bit more exaggerated on this, this head sculpt. I gotta say, he looks more sinister and badass. So out of the three here, McFarlane has definitely taken the cake for the nice design figure I think. DC Essentials obviously comes in in a close second. They were, that was my definitive Red Hood figure, until this guy showed up of course. And Mattel obviously... They tried their best. They give us the domino mask at least. I will try and see if this head will swap onto that body. And then I'm sure it's just a win-win situation all around. And he here he is on his own again. Just have a quick look at him up close. Starting from his toes, working his way up. You see he's obviously got the leather biker trousers on. He's got his boots on, the shin guards. All amazing detail. McFarlane really didn't spare any, uh, spare any expenses when they were designing this guy. And then working the way up, you can see the bat emblem, the big nice red, and then them sinister eyes. They really took their time with the head sculpt. Um, I like it on this one. Obviously, some head sculpts I've seen of the Red Hood, the hood can be done quite large. And I know he is wearing a helmet overhead, so it, it, it's going to be hard to actually simulate that. But on this, they've done a really good job. The head sculpt fits perfectly on the body. There's no out of scale issues. And again, the little detail of... The two red hood symbols that you can see on his guns was a really nice touch that they didn't have to do. Um, so yeah, absolutely fantastic figure. McFarlane seemed to be just getting better and better with each uh, wave. They do need to kind of <laughs> away from bat centric characters, but I think we're getting there. We've got a we've got a flash, and there was also a Green Lantern John Stewart announced there for coming out hopefully after Christmas. So we're slowly getting to a full league, and then. Um, 
guys look this will be the end of the review so i hope you enjoyed the review of this awesome figure i'll catch you again on the next few thanks for tuning in